welcome to today's video. So today we're going to be looking at getting your RISC PC, which is in my case running RISC OS 3.7, uh, getting your RISC OS 3.7 machine to actually be able to access an FTP. In this case the FTP is on my local uh, NAS drive. As you can see here, it's actually connected and working fine using the FTPC application which seems to be the go-to application for um, connectivity of this sort of nature. Now there were a couple of things that I need to, to do first. So a couple of updates. The first thing is I've given up on RISC-OS 4.02 for the moment, although it's something I will revisit uh, probably when I replace the hard drive. So I'm going to go for a larger hard drive. So I'm running quite low on the 210 meg drive that's in there at the moment. Anyway, I digress. The first thing that we need to do once we've got our base installation is we need to update the system component which lives within boot and if I remember rightly it is somewhere in here but it is within our boot folder there we are, under resources and within system we have a number of updates or folders which contain various modules. So as you can see here we've got our WIMP module, patch app, network, DDT etc. Now for the network card to work you need to have um, certain network modules installed. So those are basically the drivers. Now I managed to find those online I burnt them to a CD on the PC and using obviously the CD I was able to bring those across to the RISC PC. So there is actually a series of patches that are available for um, RISC OS. So if I just open up um, Sparkplug and if I remember rightly That's the ROM patch, that's not the one it was. So that's the FTPC application, but there are a couple of, as I say, patches that need to go on first. So patch-wise we have... So we have the Shared C library, uh, which is available from riscos.info forward slash index.php forward slash shared C library and that will produce a zip file called pling system. If we go back to the risk PC when you extract that or rather you open the zip you get a sysmerge file, system directory, a license and readme text file. What I tend to do is create myself a directory, extract the relevant items from here into said directory and then run sysmerge and that will update your system folder. Now I discovered that I didn't have the relevant toolbar version, I need toolbar 1.13 now, I managed to find that in a strange location, and that was within uh, 3.06 of the Aleph One PC software, which comes, if we look under release, with its own update sys application. And within update sys, we have a number of components, or rather items, which are updated. And it seemed to me that running both of those system updates allowed me to use the FTP application. So on the other side I've got a D-Link DNS320 NAS and within there I had to enable one of the volumes, or you can just do it at sort of a folder level, enable one of the folders to be um, shared. So in other words allow it to be capable of not only being shared as a standard folder but also being shared via FTP. So to connect, all we have to do is open up the FTPC application. In my instance, I just put in my host, which is that IP address there. I leave the user, password and account blank. 
no security as I've kept it as simple as possible. I can harden it um, post um, getting it working. So generally what I try to do is get things working first, then apply security afterwards. So if we go to connect, that takes me to one of the disks in the machine. Go into the risk PC directory. And in here at the moment, we've got Diva, Netsurf, and the Otter browser. So Diva is an application that will generate a code for the Aleph One software. And that is something we're going to be looking at now, actually. So if I go to hard disk and PC, go to my newer and release, I'm going to copy Diva code.zip into there. Literally, just a nice drag and drop. So it's now retrieving that, it's now retrieved that file. I can open it up and I can drag the application into here. So it's going to extract the application with Spark plug. And I can now delete the zip to save a bit of space. And there we go. So if I run Diva code, that's going to create a registration code hopefully so let's see what it does so serial number I don't know let's say one uh, product code I don't know one there we go it's actually just generated by clicking on there a nice little registration code so I'm going to go to my install PC software. And that will produce this. I'm going to install the PC card software afresh. And I need to drag the folder where I want to put said software. So, ah, sorry, no, I drag out of here into here. So PC newer release PC, there we go, and next. All of those were already installed. And next. In fact, it's here where that toolbox updates is installed. So if you are having problems with the FTP C application, even if you don't have um, a PC card in the machine, it seems that this is a good way to get certain uh, modules which may need to be updated. So Acon's latest toolbox modules needed for running all parts of PC Pro. So those are currently installed. We click next. We've got our registration code. So let's see if we can pop that in. So that's going to be PXWG. There we go. And there we go. Hit next and start. Now it's unpacking PC and PC config. We'll just uh, get rid of some of these windows in the background. Leave our FTP session connected. And it doesn't actually take that long to actually upgrade it. So we can run PC, we can install Windows 95, DOS, and then Windows 3.x, or just DOS on its own. So I'm going to exit the installer. And I'm in here now, so we've got our make boot disk, we've got PC, we've got PC config. So if we go to PC config. So we can drag your old copy of PC here. So what we can do, because I've already been playing around with the configuration, is we can go to hard drive, PC, older, and drag the PC application. We can do a bit of a conversion. And I assume that's worked. <laughs> I don't know. Let's go to PC config and see if it has worked. So if I reopen PC config, so it comes up 3.06. I go into PC config. 
There's quite a few more options in here now. So disk setup, it's yeah, it has actually read our configuration file. So we've got our hard drive here, that's already there, that's good to go. Uh, memory wise, I assigned it 32 megabytes of RAM. That's allocated, that's good. Um, we're going to support VESA 2 and direct draw, why not? Front end, uh, I'm going to select middle mouse button only for switching out. Starting as a full screen. Um, if you start it in a full screen mode, you actually get the full benefit of the speed of the actual PC card itself and also the graphic speed because you're not having to draw the risk less desktop may work better if you have a strong arm processor as well to be honest with you uh, display wise we are starting 640 by 480 with 256 colors we can change that if we need to we can also set up fast video we can also automatically switch to single tasking advanced <clears throat> Misconfigured settings in this section can seriously affect the PC. This is almost sort of like a BIOS by the looks of it. Um, gives you the cache options. It's best to leave all of these by default in my experience. So we'll leave that one very much as it is. We'll leave that one very well alone. Obviously you've got your serial port, you've got the printing option so we can allow the PC card to access the parallel port directly. Um, we can ignore the RISC-OS printer stream, we can redirect whatever you need to do. It does take a bit of sort of hit and miss to actually get it working, but it is something that we can experiment with when we come to install Windows. And once that's done, you can actually launch your new PC application, which is here. So we go PC. There's activity from the hard drive, and what will happen? So it'll start, it's allocating RAM. And here we go. And there you go. So at the moment, there's obviously no operating system on here, but it has detected that we have a CX486DX slash DX2 CPU. We've got 32 meg of RAM. And we are pretty much ready to go. So if I middle button out of this, I'll be able to go over to the PC, create a boot disk, and we can start looking at getting an operating system installed. So that very quick video was covering getting an FTP working, some of the basic things that we need to do to get that working, and also getting the PC card software installed and working as well. If you found this video interesting, don't forget to hit the like button, don't forget to subscribe, don't forget to hit the notification bell, and I will see you next time. Thank you very much for watching.